This morning, coronavirus heartbreak. Australia's first victim mourned as more cases are confirmed. Warnings the outbreak could spiral out of control. The new worry for bushfire hit New South Wales towns. Easter holiday makers set to force residents out of their temporary homes. And plastic summit. The government's recycling push as McDonald's vows to reduce waste. This is 7 News with Natalie Barr. Good morning. Coronavirus has turned deadly in Australia, claiming its first life here since the disease emerged eight weeks ago. A Perth man is being mourned after he succumbed to the illness in hospital. He leaves behind his distraught wife, who has also tested positive. Happy on holiday, James Kwan was enjoying his time on board the Diamond Princess when the coronavirus outbreak erupted. The 78-year-old and his wife were among 3,700 passengers trapped as the virus spread throughout the ship. They were evacuated along with 170 other Australians to a quarantine facility near Darwin. Testing positive, Mr Kwan was flown to Perth for treatment, but he couldn't beat the illness. His wife, who's also infected, paid tribute from her hospital bed. In a statement, she said, My husband passed away peacefully, knowing that his family loved him. His wife remained stable um, in hospital. She's obviously, um, she had the opportunity to obviously talk to him prior to his death. And unfortunately, he's the first um, death we've had from coronavirus in Australia. Now concerns it may not be the last. Another infected Diamond Princess passenger has been flown to Melbourne for treatment after being isolated. And overnight, a ninth confirmed case in Victoria, a woman who arrived home from Iran. In Sydney, a separate traveller returning from the Middle East nation is also infected. We have had two cases uh, in uh, the last three weeks identified in the general community, both uh, from Iran. In Queensland, experts are warning of an outbreak after a Gold Coast beautician tested positive. Travel bans to China and Iran remain in place as the contagion continues to spread across the globe. We should be putting all the smarts into not how we stop this, but we can't, because we can't, but how we develop a vaccine. There are now more than 85,000 cases and nearly 3,000 people have died. As fears take hold, shoppers report a rise in panic buying, leaving shelves bare. Eliza Avery, 7 News. A whopping 400 kilograms of methamphetamine has been intercepted by law enforcement. Border Force first noticed inconsistencies with an air cargo delivery that arrived at a Sydney freight depot from Southeast Asia last month. The haul of ice has an estimated street value of $300 million. Residents made homeless by bushfires on the New South Wales south coast are facing more turmoil with asbestos hampering the rebuild of their homes. It comes as some are being told they need to get out of their replacement accommodation over Easter as holidaymakers take their pre-existing bookings. I've got no idea what we're going to do. We'll probably end up living in a caravan so we can actually afford the rebuild. Residents are concerned the money will run out before the rebuild is complete and they're also facing further stress with counselling services to be scaled back. A woman is being interviewed by police over the hit-run death of a teenage girl in North Queensland. The 15-year-old died at the scene before a widespread search began for the vehicle that struck her. After emergency crews issued a plea for help, a 29-year-old Mackay woman went to police. They're appealing for anyone with dash cam video to come forward. Charges are yet to be laid. Olympic champion Mac Horton has received death threats from supporters of banned drug cheat Sun Yang. Horton's social media pages were flooded after the Chinese swimmer was given an eight-year ban. Australian basketballer Andrew Bogut, a long-term critic of Sun Yang, has also been targeted by trolls. I had a little smile about it. Christmas came early, so I had a little bit of fun with it on Twitter. And now the death threats and all that kind of stuff started again. Yang has slammed the verdict as unfair and plans to appeal. Victoria Police are investigating after a wedding at a luxury estate near Geelong ended in violence. Officers and paramedics had to be called after the estate's owner lashed out at the bridal party. 
They had made a complaint about a lack of basic amenities. He hit back, allegedly cutting off the lights and disconnecting wires during the reception. A dirt bike rider has been caught on camera in Adelaide dicing with death, death on a highway. South Australia police have confirmed they're investigating following a string of fatal motorbike crashes in the state. Furious motorists watch on in horror. It's going on the wrong side of the road. The dirt bike rider and his passenger hurtle along the Northern Expressway, throwing caution to the wind. No helmet, what the f Shane Hagerstrom was lost for words as he recalled the terrifying moment the rider flew past him. There's a lot of words I'd want to say, but you can't put that on TV. Five motorcyclists have been killed on South Australian roads in just two months. I've had a fair few friends lose their lives on, on the roads too, so... Yeah, it's um, pretty selfish. Police call the rider's actions dangerous and reckless, showing an apparent disregard for road rules and the safety of others. It's pretty dangerous, like putting the other motorists on, on the roads, you know, in danger. The Motorcycle Riders Association says it's working tirelessly with the government and its agencies to improve road safety, but stresses you can't legislate against stupidity. What are you doing, you idiot? Rosie Barnett, 7 News. A man has stunned doctors by coming back to life after his heart stopped for a full 90 minutes. Cardiologists say he was as good as dead, but now he's in good health with a new lease of life. <laughs> Alistair Blake is the picture of health. This time last year, he was seconds from death, his wife watching helplessly as paramedics worked to save him. The police took me out to the other room to say, look, they've worked a really long time and there's nothing. Melinda and Alistair were staying at their beach house when she woke to what she thought was her husband snoring. She soon realised he was having a cardiac arrest. So I had to roll him over and, and, you know, she said start CPR. Melinda performed CPR before paramedics arrived. Alistair was medically dead for 90 minutes before his heart began to beat again. You know, 90 minutes downtime, we'd expect to see some permanent disabilities. The accountant spent four days in intensive care. When he woke, doctors were stunned to see no signs of any physical or mental damage. They fitted him with a pacemaker and he was discharged from hospital three weeks later. Mr Blake's story is so remarkably rare, his doctors have given him the nickname Lazarus. Well, I think it's uh, quite appropriate, even though I had to look it up when, after it was first mentioned to me. <laughs> Now the 59-year-old granddad is back doing what he does best, living life to the fullest. Each day's a bonus and you just look at it and it's like, but the other side of that, try and live life as normal as possible. Georgia Common Solely, 7 News. A $2 million tourism campaign encouraging travellers to holiday in Queensland has hit our screens. The major marketing blitz hopes to encourage Australians to help the state's struggling tourism industry, which has been hit hard by bushfires and coronavirus. The ad highlights Queensland's beaches, reef holidays and world-class events. French school children have brought a little bit of joy to some young Aussies doing it tough after the bushfire tragedy. The kids from Fromel wrote to their buddies in Victoria, honouring a bond that goes back to World War I. At their temporary school, you have a look at these kids. Okay. morale boosting letters for the Clifton Creek kids from far flung French friends. I'm a pupil of the Fromelles Cobber School in France. My name is Maxine. Love from France. Messages of support with koalas and kangaroos after their school was destroyed. Our thoughts are with you. We hope your school will be rebuilt soon. All because of a bond forged 104 years ago. Over the top into a world of bullet, smoke and flame. The first when of thousands of young Aussie soldiers were killed at Fromel, among them William Fitton, born at Clifton Creek. So to honour him, these French students wrote their letters to his hometown. And that's why the connection exists between your school and the Fromel school. Fitton's descendants delighted at this unique memorial. I'm sort of lost for words in a way. It's just too much. It, it, it gets to my heart. The Fromel letters will feature on the walls of the portable classrooms when they move back to their old school next month. Nearly every single country is trying to help us. How does that make you feel? 
Pizza Gravy. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Checking Monday's weather now. Sunny in Brisbane today. A gusty afternoon. Cool change in Sydney, 26. Partly cloudy in Canberra. Showers clearing in Melbourne, 18 degrees. Early rain in Hobart. Partly cloudy in Adelaide, a top of 23. Mostly sunny in Perth today. And a shower or two and a possible storm in Darwin. Coming up in 7 Early News, a massive inferno engulfs a San Francisco warehouse. What caused the blaze? New hope, what researchers have discovered about a common disorder linked to infertility. And a red-backed spider takes on a baby brown snake. How does it end? Find out next. The Prime Minister will today outline a three-point recycling plan to stop thousands of tonnes of plastic waste. Scott Morrison is planning to address the first National Plastics Summit in Canberra as the country tries to reduce the amount of plastic being produced. It's understood Mr Morrison will announce incentive funding for recycling infrastructure. McDonald's is also getting on board to tackle the plastic problem. The fast food chain is planning to move entirely to wooden cutlery. A large fire has broken out at an industrial complex in San Francisco. The fire took hold in a restaurant which was under renovation and spread to a warehouse next door. More than 100 firefighters were brought in to contain the blaze. Flames and smoke could be seen billowing into the air from across the city. No one was injured in the blaze. A powerful storm battering the British Isles has whipped up an unusual phenomenon. This video shows a blizzard of sea foam rolling onto a beach as the storm hit the west coast of Ireland. Storm Jorge has brought severe winds and heavy rain. The wild conditions also cut power to thousands of homes. A coughing Pope Francis has addressed pilgrims gathered for the traditional Sunday blessing in St Peter's Square. The pontiff, who's been sick for more than a week now, told the crowd he won't be attending a week-long spiritual retreat because of his bad cold. It's the first time in his seven-year papacy that he's missed the retreat, which marks the start of Lent. Malaysia has a new prime minister ending a week of political turmoil. Muhyiddin Yassin has, was sworn in by the king following the collapse of the reformist government and the unexpected resignation of Mahathir Mohamad. Mr Mahathir has called for an urgent sitting of parliament, saying the new prime minister lacks majority support. Checking finance now. The Dow Jones traded lower. The Nasdaq gained in London. The FT100 fell 216 points. Germany stacks lost. On the commodities market, gold is trading at 1582 US dollars an ounce. Oil 45 US dollars a barrel. The Aussie dollar is buying 65 US cents, 70 U Japanese yen, and a dollar for New Zealand today. Now, being told you may not be able to have children can be devastating news. Now, Australian researchers believe many women are being diagnosed with a common disorder linked to infertility when they may be perfectly healthy. When Nicole Liu was diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome, it came with another dire prediction. I was told by this GP that I would be potentially infertile. Getting told that I couldn't have kids was a real shock to like everything I believed in. Then a gynaecologist said she'd been wrongly diagnosed. I'm definitely very relieved off the back of that. PCOS affects one in six Australian women. Common symptoms include cysts in the ovaries, skipped or irregular periods and high levels of male hormone. New research from the University of Sydney finds many are being misdiagnosed and those who do have it may not struggle to fall pregnant. It can be extremely um, distressing to hear that you might have reduced fertility um, and kind of cause long-lasting anxiety. This study provides new hope for many women who want to start a family that it may not actually be out of reach. The first step is getting the right advice. Even if it might take a little bit longer or they might need a little bit of medical assistance to help them ovulate when they're ready to have a baby, um, in the end most women will end up with a desired family size. Now Nicole's helping others with her website, Kin. Give women better information to help them take control about their fertility and reproductive health. Jessica Ridley, 7 News. 
A redback spider has slayed a deadly brown snake in a cutthroat battle in a suburban Adelaide backyard. The resident of the home was putting her washing out when she stumbled across the snake entangled in a web with a spider on its back. Video of the clash shows the serpent suspended in the web, desperately trying to break free. But the spider swiftly wraps its silk around the snake's body and over its head until it is completely engulfed before scurrying away. But next on 7 Early News, Essendon receives a major boost ahead of the upcoming AFL season and an injury blow for St Kilda as Tani White appears likely to become the 11th AFLW player this season to do an ACL. To sport and star magpie Adam Trelaw is in major doubt for round one Trelaw after injuring his hamstring in the club's 40-point win over Richmond in a pre-season clash. He's grabbing that left hamstring. I think he's just had a little strain, which is incredibly disappointing at this stage of pre-season. Essendon's Connor McKenna is set to return to training in the coming days and should be available for round one. The 23-year-old recently returned home to Ireland after feeling homesick. Carlton have spoiled Crows star Erin Phillips' highly anticipated return from a knee reconstruction with an eight-point win over Adelaide at Richmond Oval in Adelaide. The Crows led for most of the game, but the Blues managed to redeem themselves after last year's grand final loss. Those last five minutes we were actually dead and we only kept going because we wanted to celebrate this with each other. At Moorabbin, injury struck St Kilda in their one-point loss to Frio. It looks like Tani White will be the 11th player this season to do an ACL, while Kate McCarthy left the ground with another knee injury. In Brisbane, the Lions beat the GWS Giants 51-23. to Cronulla centre Josh Morris has reminded the club why he's worth fighting for in the Sharks' 28-16 win over Manly. Morris is trying to facilitate a release from the club to join twin Brett at the Roosters. Tigers captain Moses Embai is racing to be fit for round one after limping off with a knee injury in their trial against the Warriors. His side came from behind to win 20 to 6. I suppose on the positive note, um, the boys hung in there, dug deep and uh, I thought we played the type of footy we wanted to play in the second half. The Tigers play the Dragons in round one. Melbourne City have surged back into second place on the A-leg ladder with a 1-0 win over Brisbane Raw at Melbourne's Amy Park. Following a tense opening half, Joshua Brillante brilliantly found the net. He got a touch of fortune. It rebounded in off the goalkeeper, who otherwise has been excellent tonight. But City lead are not balanced, deservedly so. Western United piled more misery on last place Central Coast Mariners, defeating them 6-2. United's Max Burgess scored a hat-trick. The Cairns Taipans have sent the NBL semi-final series to a third and deciding game against the Perth Wildcats. Needing a win to stay alive in the finals, the home side blew Perth off the court in the opening quarter. Cameron Oliver was brilliant with 22 points and 19 rebounds. Is the flash of Cam Oliver? The Taipans beat Perth 85 to 74. Game three is on Thursday in Perth. The winner moves through to the final. And there was a perfect farewell for legendary Aussie Diamonds coach Lisa Alexander in yesterday's Bushfire Relief fundraiser in Sydney. The Diamonds turned it on in front of a vocal crowd, beating the All Stars. Waits to bring the house down, and she does. The Diamonds winning 66 to 53, a brilliant end for the coach and champion player Caitlin Thwaites. Next on 7 Early News, a closer look at how the weather's shaping up in your part of the country. It's unusual enough to give birth to one baby on leap day, but a mother in the US has done it twice. Baby Scout was born in New York on February 29, making her a leap year baby. Her arrival came exactly four years after big brother Omri was born on the last leap year. The family plans to celebrate the birthdays on two consecutive days, with Omri on February 28 and Scout on March 1 except for every leap year when they will hold a joint party. 
Taking a look at the weather around the country now, a low near the Kimberley will continue to cause widespread rain, storms and gusty winds that will start to push southwards over the Northern Territory and Western Queensland. Very warm to hot for New South Wales and Southern Queensland, ahead of a change that will bring a cooler day to Victoria and also Southern South Australia. Looking at the capitals today, sunny if you're in Brisbane, 26 degrees with a gusty afternoon cool change for Sydney, partly cloudy in Canberra today. Showers will clear in Melbourne, 18 degrees. Early rain in Hobart, partly cloudy in Adelaide today, a top of 23. Mostly sunny in Perth and a shower or two and a possible storm in Darwin today. That is Evans' early news for this Monday, the 2nd of March. I'm Natalie Barr. Now it's time for Sunrise with Koshi and Sam. New details, coronavirus turns deadly, Australia's first fatality. A Diamond Princess passenger loses his fight for life as more cases are confirmed and fears grow. Supermarket shelves clear.